dubbed as the Iron Lady of Maranti, Zulaira Abu Bakar shares her journey, which has led her to become one of the most influential CEOs in Malaysia's tech and innovation landscape. Let's take a look. Uh, so as one of the most influential CEOs, especially in the tech and innovation landscape, uh, perhaps you can share with us your journey and what led you to be in this role, Zulaira. Oh, wow. Uh, just like every, anyone else, I think it started a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I always, you know, I always tell people that mm, my journey into tech is somewhat an accidental journey, really. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, uh, technology is is an ever-changing field, so I've always been interested in it. But as far as a job and career is concerned, it was really accidental. I mean, I'm trained a lawyer. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was trained to be a lawyer, but um. I never ended up becoming a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I I started my job with a, a government agency actually. So we were in. Um, literally rocket science, you know, so I was working in this agency that um, built and sent up uh, satellites. Oh, right. Okay. So it was a government agency, still okay. is a government agency okay. under the Ministry of Science. So I, that's, that's literally how I started my journey. And um, so, like I said, it was an accidental journey uh, and uh, I got stuck in it. And it sort of opened my eyes in terms of the potential. Mm. You know, and uh, after that, I got into venture capital, and I was exposed into this entire world of investing. And um, this is probably what, 15, 16 years ago, and really, yeah, time flies. Time flies. Time flies. Yes. And um, and so I, I look back into you know the work that I've done, the journey that that I've had. I I, I find myself feeling very grateful for that sort of accidental journey or the path that sort of God led me in, I would say. I, I've been lucky, I've been lucky to have many great bosses, many great jobs um, and yeah, which led me to where I am today. Because a lot of people are still uh, thinking and they remember magic, you know. But having said that, because of this convergence, I'm sure that there were challenges that came along with it. Yes. Um, so, uh, what are among the obstacles or, shall I say, challenges that you face in achieving what you are here today? We are looking at a convergence, a consolidation of entities, which means there are lesser inefficiencies mm -hmm. okay? or maybe you know in moving in the direction where we will reduce inefficiencies um, create a little bit more focus okay. for the industry okay. and uh, a one-stop center in that sense right so you want to reduce redundancies because I think the way we we were sort of organized in the past there were multiple agencies set up by the government all for right reasons all mm -hmm. for for wanting to promote and sort of grow local talent, the industry, investments, funding. But I think admittedly in that process, we have one too many agencies. Mm. Um, so, Especially under Mosti. Correct, yeah. correct. In yeah. general, within mm. the science and tech, you know, that's sort of the innovation yeah. ecosystem. And uh, we aren't a very big industry to start mm. off. Uh, so, it made sense to, to sort of consolidate mm -hmm. where focus will be given, reduce the redundancies in terms of programs. So there were right. somewhat overlapping functions, overlapping right. programs between agencies. They still are, but with the consolidation, it is reduced. Mm -hmm. Right? It is, it is reduced. So right now, Ranti Corp for that matter, which is a result of a merger between Magic and Technology Park Malaysia, will be the one-stop centre offering commercialisation support mm -hmm. for technology companies. Yeah. Okay, um, Malaysia is placed 36th on the Global Innovation Index yeah. and that is this year, which is 2022. Now, what are your thoughts on this? Um, you know, uh, what do you think uh, some of the obstacles that the country is facing in order to you know, move ahead to build a more robust environment as far as um, technology and innovation is concerned. Are you satisfied with that 36th position? 
course not. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. I think, um, well, the good thing is that we haven't gone down. Mm. Right? Uh, we were 33, 36, and I think we've remained 36, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yes, um, 36. We, we have a target mm -hmm. under the uh, RMK12, which is the 12 Malaysian plan, to actually bring up the ranking to top 20. Mm. And that is something that needs to be achieved the soonest. This global innovation rank is a combination of multiple things. Talent readiness, the innovation ecosystem, infrastructure, what we're trying right. to fix, mm. right? Uh, policies, um, a friendliness towards receiving and, and, and taking in foreign investments, uh, domestic investments. So it's a combination of multiple factors, uh, which is not a responsibility of one agency. It is a collective national collective. responsibility in terms of elevating our innovation ranking in that right. sense. Coming back to what you said about shouting and promoting what Malaysia is doing overseas, yeah. and uh, you definitely have created a presence. Why? Because it's so striking to see a woman in tech. And you have done this ever so successfully, okay? Huh? So, um, does gender matter, Lyra? My thinking to this is, should gender matter? Yeah, okay. What should matter is That's a great capability. Answer. Yes. Right? Yeah. Should gender matter at all? It doesn't, yeah, it shouldn't matter at all. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. What matters is... Yep. Capabilities, uh, the values that you bring, and um, the ability to mm. see things through. Why look at gender? Why look at gender? Why should gender be a discussion? But the reason why we, you know, constantly, and I also constantly talk about gender, is because we use that excuse to not give women that representation. Mm. Sad but true. Sad but true. Mm. Mm. Right? True. So, yeah. which is why if we do not have um, any sort of conscious efforts and policies to push women out there, and of course support more importantly, given that the role they play in society, in family, mm. you, know, in, in, you know, in raising a family, it's very important for them to have the right support system. So policies and, and, uh, and support needs to be there in order for them to go out. How do you de-stress? You know, I always ask myself, you know, and how do you de stress and all that, but I think it's I'm just doing a fraction of what you oh, are doing. Oh, no, not at all. So, <laughs> how do you not strike this all, no. um, life work balance thing? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm going to get shot <laughs> for saying this, but I don't think work life balance actually exists. Uh. <laughs> you know, I think you need to realistically, realistically yeah. mm. build in balance in everything that you do. If you're going to say, oh, I need to have work-life balance, then you're never going to achieve it. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. But, uh, yeah, you that's know, cool. That's cool. You and I, we, you know, you know this, that it's, when you, when you give it your all, when you need to do something, it's sometimes 24 hours a day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so, but you know, you do need to take time for yourself. Mm. Do stuff that make you happy, <laughs> de-stress and then occasionally I do my yoga, my pilates and you know walks with friends in the weekend. I go hiking in the weekend. I like doing that a lot and recently I picked That's up crazy. tennis. Oh, um, how's that going? Uh, well, <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, I enjoy the game. Not that I'm good at it but I enjoy it. Uh, we're taking a bit of lessons. So yeah, I mean that's how I, I de-stress and of course uh, reading a good book. Clearly, Malaysia is on its way to become a high-income nation, but not one without bumps, into becoming one of the most competitive countries in the region in terms of technology and innovation. I'm Ann Edwards for Top Guns.